Thank you for tuning in to the Dare to Dream podcast, courtesy of Reticence Marketing. We are dedicated to the thinkers and the midnight dreamers, those whom the world has forgotten. Be a dreamer, be a doer, be a believer. Begin your digital marketing journey with us today by going to reticencemarketing.com. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to tune in with us to the Dare to Dream podcast, courtesy of Reticence Marketing. I am Colton, the host here, and I'm sitting here with Angelina from Mint and Porter Design Company. Hi, Angelina. How are you doing today? Hey, great, Colton. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm glad to have you. So, I mean, just just getting started real quickly, if you can tell us a little bit about um, you, your company, what you do, and, and, you know, how you're doing so far. Yeah, sure. Um, so I own Mint and Porter Design Company here in downtown Colorado Springs, and I specialize both in graphic and web design. Yeah, pretty simple and to the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's perfect. Compact, simple. And as a marketing company, that's something that we try to focus on a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, coming from the you know the graphic design perspective, obviously that's really important for business owners to. Um, address when they're looking at marketing their own company, you know, whether it be their logo or the graphics they're putting up on social media or their website design. How would you define the importance of design and graphics and things of that nature in terms of the company's marketing plan? Oh, I'm so glad you answer, or asked that question. <laughs> Such a great question. Well, I think with marketing and design, you have to have this kind of all the cogs kind of working together to create this really beautiful brand. And um, oftentimes people will see you, um, you know, business cards or website first. So it's really important to have a professional brand and brand identity. And I think the graphic designer Paul Rand sums it up the best. His quote is, he said, design is the silent ambassador of your brand. And I think that sums it up perfectly. Wow, that that actually is a really good quote. I'm, I'm going to steal that now and put that yeah. on some of our graphics. So <laughs> just saying. It's by Paul Rand. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Paul Rand. Got it. That is... <laughs> But that is an amazing quote, you know, in and of itself. It's it's really, you know, a lot of what we do in marketing is kind of the psychological or subconscious aspect, um, especially if you look at like modern day advertisement. I, I refer to this as brain spam. Um, it's kind of my <laughs> term for it that I've coined. Like and that. <laughs> you like it? You like it? <laughs> it's really just, you know, my term for describing how we are consistently bombarded with advertisement, advertisement, advertisement. And, you know, we are consistently bombarded with all these graphics, all this content, and you just see so much on a daily basis that it's becoming increasingly more complicated. It's becoming harder to really establish a name for your company, to establish that subconscious recognition with people, unless you're, you know, this huge brand like, um, I don't know, Coca-Cola or or Budweiser or, you know, DirecTV, you know, that, that have multi-million dollar budgets that they can just pour into their marketing. They had to start somewhere. So I encourage a small business owner to, to give it a try. It takes yeah. time, commitment, but they can do it. Yeah, but you're right. It's, we kind of just turn it off at some point because we see so much every day. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and I would say that, um, you know, going back to that term, brain spam, <laughs> that's, yeah. really, that's really where having really well-designed graphics, having just, just design work in general, you know, if your website is better than everyone else's and your graphics are just amazing and eye-catching and they flow and they're appealing and they're really getting your message across, people are going to naturally be more interested in your brand and they're going to start establishing you know a relationship with you an indirect relationship a relationship that's based on trust and you know in the modern day advertising and marketing world where we are just bombarded with all of this constantly quality is becoming more important than ever well said <laughs> thank you thank you that's what that's why i host a podcast you know <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah so i mean let's i i'm interested in learning more about your story um, you know, how did you get into graphic design and, and why, you know, why, why design work? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so actually, I, I really kind of share the same thought process with you because I come from a marketing background and that's where my design career led me. And so um, I decided to go freelance. But with that, I have a really strong basis in marketing, which I think is so important because I don't make pretty pictures just to make pretty pictures. There's a, there's, you know, we as designers, we solve problems. Uh, we solve problems for your brand to get the right messaging across. And that's 
kind of what I've taken with me from my, my design background or my marketing background. And I actually went to school for studio art. I'm from Orlando. So I went to the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida. And I majored in studio art. I was a painter. That was my first love. And I graduated in 09 and I was like, well, what am I going to do with this? So <laughs> I was just so happy to finish and just get to that point. I, I then thought, oh, I'll just get a job. And I realized that probably wasn't the most practical thing to major in, though it's what I loved and I don't regret it. I think just thinking back now, maybe I would have, um, which a lot of good friends told me at the time, specialize in something. And I think I probably would have taken that advice if I had looked back. But no big deal. I got a bachelor's degree, which helped me a lot. And then I went on to photography. So my husband is Army. We've moved around a lot. We moved to New York, uh, which helped me do a New York, uh, an internship in New York City for three months. That was amazing. That gave me a chance to kind of live my dreams for three months in the big city working for um, Walter Schieffer Management, which is like, um, they represent photographers. And it was, it was like, you know, it was kind of my devil wears Prada moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was pretty cool. And then we moved to Oahu, uh, which was beautiful. And I started getting into photography, which... I loved and I really had a chance to learn it, which is never, it's never hurt me to know um, your basics of photography. Um, however, it was just a really competitive market and people were very well established, say like wedding photographers on Oahu. So right. I got a, lot of, a little scared and I went back to school, um, which was not a bad thing because I went back to school for craft design. And then after I finished with that, a uh, prospective client started asking me, hey, can you make my website? So then I went back to school for web design and I learned how to code for front and web development. So with that, I got started working in startups and then for the federal government and marketing departments. So I've worked for... Um, the federal like government has a marketing department? But, uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's a really good way to go. Uh, I've worked both here in Colorado Springs at Fort Carson for their MWR you know, marketing department, marketing assistant, which encompasses everything from social media marketing to graphic design. And then also I worked at the Holly Koa, which is a um, armed forces recreation center. It's basically the military's uh, hotel in Waikiki. And I was the graphic designer, um, one of two people in their marketing department. And funny enough, my um, coworker was also the magician and he did all the videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, perfect. Yes, it was really fun. So uh, that's where it kind of led me. Well, and then, of course, I left in April at Fort Carson to go full time into my business uh, now doing graphic and web. So that's wow. kind of how I got started. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> of course. <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And and that's always something that we really like to touch on on this podcast, especially when we get business owners on really regarding what it's like to kind of leave, you know, the corporate world, the nine to five lifestyle, and just be like, you know what, I'm done working for other people, it is now time for me to do whatever I want and do my own thing. And that's a, it's a very freeing decision. Um, but at the same time, it is a very hard decision. So how has your experience been with that? <laughs> um yeah you you said it well it's it's both it's both exhilarating and terrifying so I'm happy I did it I don't regret my decision I you know I'm really good with keeping track of um of, of my business statistics and seeing where I'm at with it and so um it's turned out to be a good decision and and I just keep growing and and uh hopefully I, I will continue to do this and yeah I just I the reason I decided to leave my full-time job um at Fort Carson which I really love by the way we got to do really cool things like go to Overdrive Raceway and ride in a Lamborghini just to videotape <laughs> it for like social media for our Facebook page so right. it was hard to give up a job like that <laughs> um <laughs> fun yeah, it was fun. And social media marketing is really fun. So with that, I just I was hitting burnout. Um, I was working like 60 hour plus weeks. And I was having it was getting to the point where I was turning down work from prospective clients. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go all in and hopefully this works out. And, and so far I have so it's been very good. Well, that's awesome. I, we're, I'm really happy for you. And I'm sure that our, our audiences as well. Um, we're all kind of on that entrepreneurial journey. And you've taken the the 60 hour work weeks. And now it's a uh, 24 hour 24 seven every day. That's your, that's yes. your uh, work schedule. Yeah. <laughs> I've taken 60 and then I've uh, made it 60 with just, you know, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I'm but, like, I'm happy. I'm happy. So yeah, and that's, that's something uh, on our last podcast last week, I was talking about that, how 
I used to work a um, I used to work in hotels. So my background has primarily been in hospitality and um, hospitality management because you know I love hotels. I love customer service. Um, but it really got to that point where I was like, okay, I'm sick of having to work this standard eight hour shift. And then, you know, someone calls in and then I have to go handle that. And then we have an issue with an employee and I got to handle that, you know? And it's, I'm just like, yeah. And all the while I was running my marketing company on the side. And nice. really, once I got to that point, um, th- there's just a point where you're done, you know, and it's not, it, you're, you're just done. And it doesn't have to be because you're done with the employer or you don't like your job because you did like your job, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's it's a kind of this inner voice that says, okay, it's time to it's time to really be yourself. Let's go fulfill your true entrepreneurial purpose. Right. And you're gonna drive yourself crazy while doing it, but it's gonna work out. It's about no regrets and kind of like uh, looking back and saying, what if? I'm just glad I tried it. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. A lot of businesses fail, but you can always start another one. It's not the end of the world. So exactly. And and so how would you define um, the difference? between you know the entrepreneur the dreamer the business owner um obviously this is the dare to dream podcast so that's this that that. is our ideal audience you know and so when it it really takes a a large amount of courage for someone to really dare to dream that's why we use the the word dare because you have to dare you know it's not just you don't just go and do it um it, it requires a lot of courage a lot of fortitude a lot of determination so what would you say to that business owner out there or that that person who wants to start a business? You know, maybe it's a high schooler, maybe it's someone in their 60s, who knows? But yeah. they they have this dream and there's just something in them that that is unfulfilled because that, that's really what it feels like, isn't it? You yes. know. It's, yes, that's a really good point. That that's probably what led us to do what we're doing. So, yeah. Right. Right. So what what would you say to that person? Just start just start where you're at right now with insecurities and everything that you're feeling, just do it. And I'm not saying that you go say, I'm done. I quit my job tomorrow, but you know, start taking on freelance clients, start figuring it out. Um, if you're, if you're really kind of apprehensive, maybe you can go apprentice under someone for a while, but you know, just start creating, start making your portfolio or, or what have you looking for consulting clients, whatever business you're doing. And I think, um, the fear of, what if holds a lot of people back and it doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to start and you'll figure it out. I, I have a lot of growing to do. Uh, I've grown a lot and I have a lot more to grow. Um, but it's kind of an adventure and this is part of it. It's kind of the fun. So that's mm-hmm. my biggest advice is, um, and then also planning things is a really good one. Um, I really like the quote, a dream without a goal is just a wish and yes. I, it's perfect. And so I, I have my little, it's, it's very girly, but I have my little panda planner and, um, <laughs> and so I, I, <laughs> it's got a little panda on it and I write out my monthly goals, my weekly goals and my daily goals. And then I reflect on that every morning and evening. And that helps me kind of, um, not get lost in a, a million little yeah. uh, things I don't really need to be focusing on and just focus on my priorities. And that really helps a lot. Awesome. Goal setting, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> it actually works. <laughs> Dream yeah. building, goal setting, we have all these really fun terms for it. But I mean, really, all of them, we can say as many fancy things as we want and then, you know, kind of dilute what we're saying into as many phrases and, and keywords as we want. But at the end, it just comes down to, like you said, just do it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think you'll, you'll be happy with the results. You'll, it's just a, uh, I love this because not only do I love designing, but it's just a, a part of a job well done. And if, even if you take the money out of it, I'm still happy doing what I do. And I think that's important. Passion is important as well. So. I agree. If you're not passionate about it, how are you ever going to, how are you ever going to actually make a difference? You know, yeah. Yeah. And that's the same, you know, if, if there's people who have, you know, these, these corporate jobs or nine to five jobs um, and they, they might have a good job. They, they may appreciate their job, like their job, like their position. They have a nice salary, you know, things of that nature. They have great benefits. But like we were just saying, there's something inside them that's like, this, this is not right. And something business, more. Yeah, you want something more. And, and really going into business for yourself is, is one of the best ways, I would say, um, to express that. But not necessarily business, you know, if you just doing something to give back, you know. 
and to really take what you take your dreams and make them a reality. And that's what, you know, at Reticence Marketing, that's what we believe in. That's why our motto is dare to dream. There's not many marketing companies out there with a motto like that, you know? It's, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> our goal, and, and this sounds like your goal too, um, is really to take business owners and take entrepreneurs to take dreamers and say, hey, it is possible. Let us help you get there. Let's tell your story together. Yes, it's it's really true, and and I feel really honored to be on this kind of journey with with new business owners. And I work with both startups and you know already established business excuse me business owners. But, um, <laughs> I think it's really amazing to sit down with a business owner and they say, "Hey, I want to do this. Like, how do I start? Can you help me?" And I say, "Yeah, let's let's dream together, and we'll make it happen." It's pretty. It's a pretty cool thing. So. Right. Let's engage in a little mind meld action, and uh, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get the thoughts flowing, and then we're just gonna make your business explode. That's yeah. that's what I tell clients all the time. They're like, "So, so, how can you help me? How can you help me?" And I'm like, "Well, not gonna guarantee anything, but I will tell you this: I'm going to die <laughs> trying to make your business explode. Your business is gonna be out there, and I'm gonna make sure everyone knows who you are. Everyone's gonna know, and we are going to tell your story." Because everyone has a story and everyone's story is amazing in its own way. Yes. Um, and that's why getting people to be able to tell their stories, that's how you make sales. Um, I don't know if you, you know, if, if you've listened to a lot of our podcasts or, you know, watched the videos that we put up on Facebook and things like that. But something that I'm always saying, and I really try to drive home with people is that if you have a product or service that you have to sell, if you're going out there and you have to sell your product or service, that means that your product or service isn't good in the first place. That's a really good point. I mean, most of my work comes from word of mouth and referrals. And I think a lot of a lot of it kind of goes back to passion. I think others see how passionate I am. And it sounds like you're incredibly passionate about marketing. So I would imagine, do you get a lot of business from word of mouth? We do. Um, have you ever heard of the term, um, so th there's two pretty cool terms, relationship marketing and um, attraction marketing, if you've heard of either one of those. I haven't actually. What are they? So relationship marketing, I, I love to nerd out about this. this is awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> so relationship marketing is really when you're, instead of focusing on, you know, sales strategies and advertisements and things like that, um, it's, it's kind of like a cousin. I, I would call it a cousin to um, network marketing. Um, cause it's not network marketing, but it does have, you know, a connection to it. So it's really getting out there and forming connections, forming relationships with people and really building that trust with them. Um, because when you think of the nature of our industry here in marketing or design work, it's all based on trust. You know, it, you, it, it's kind of like your accountant or your lawyer. Um, it's the same with your marketer or your designer. You want to have someone that you can trust. And, and that's why I always stress that. My company, so Reticence Marketing does not want to have a business, a contractor client relationship. We don't want it to be, we're the contractor, you know, we're doing this work for you, pay the invoice, here's the bill, thanks, we'll get this done, have a nice day. No, we want to have an actual relationship with our client to tell, and that's why we always go out there and we say, you know, our clients aren't clients, they're family, you mm -hmm. know, and that's really, that. so that's kind of relationship marketing in a, nut, in a nutshell. Um, I know how we were just talking about like brain spam. You know, it's the same thing. Um, if you have all these brands that are just throwing advertisements at your face all the time, but then someone actually takes the time to meet with you and says, hey, you know, they don't even try to sell anything because you know how sales representatives are. It's like a used car salesman. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> so, and that's, exactly. And that's what goes back to if you're having to sell your product, your product isn't good enough. You need to be attracting people. And that's where... You know, attraction marketing is a thing as well. So attraction marketing is basically putting out the right content, design work, you know, yeah. blogs, <laughs> videos, things like that. And you're basically telling your story. You're, you're telling the story of your company. And because of that, people are coming to you. They're saying, wow, I really like what this company represents. So that's who, that's who I want to do business with. Even if I don't even know what their product is, I just want one because oh, yeah. I love this company. Person. Yeah. If or you've ever heard... Yeah. What were you saying? Oh, it's Sorry. the person of the company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you've ever heard, uh, so Simon Sinek, he has a great quote. Um, and it's that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Yes. 
Yes, how, what, why? He's fantastic. <laughs> he is. Oh my God, I love it. Yes, I. That is a book that everyone. Well, he has several books now, but start with why, and then leaders eat last are two of the best books ever written. Okay, I'll check it out. I've I've watched his TED talks, but other than that, and, um, yeah, I I love him. He's great. Yeah, you should definitely, definitely check out his book. So start with why and then I'm uh, Leaders Eat Last are two really good, really good books. But that's really just diving into it's the why of your company. You know, so many people have defined the what of their company. Well, what do you do? Well, I'm a plumber or I'm a roofer or, you know, I do this or that. I sell this product. Well, that's nice. So does, so does like 500 other people here. Right. Why do you do it? Right. And, right. and then that's how you build it. You don't promote the product. You promote kind of like you were saying, you promote the person, the company, the culture, the story behind the product. And that's kind of what you do as a designer, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, with, with each new client, I sit down and I have a creative brief that goes over these these exact questions. Who is your market? Like wh- what? Give me five words that describe your brand. And these are really important questions because I, I, I don't make pretty pictures just for the sake of it. I, I, I make, you know, attractive brand identity based on what you're trying to do as a brand. So awesome. All right. Well, we're coming to the end of this podcast here. So do you have anything else that, you know, you want to talk about or, you know, just talk about your company or your story or, you know, really anything? This is kind of the free zone now. Um, no, I just wanted to thank you very much for having me on. And I really love this idea of what you're promoting. And um, yeah, starting my business has been one of the, the most gratifying things I've ever done. So I would encourage um, anyone else to do the same. I'm happy to answer any questions. If anyone has any, um, you can find me at www.mintsimporter.com. And that's mint like the tea, A-N-D, and porter as in the beer, even though that's not where it came from. But I mean, it helps. <laughs> so um, yeah, get in touch with me. And I'd love to grab a coffee and get to know the community. Awesome. And breath, mints, and beer. That's how I'm going to refer to your company from now on. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that is a graphic right there. I'm just, I'm imagining the logo. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for coming on. And and I think it was it was great to have you on this podcast to really shine a light on design work and, and your story and how that affects other business owners and you know just your story of how you got started and how you've recently gone independent, you know. Kudos to you. We're all kind of in the same um we're all in the same thing here. We're trailblazers and um being a trailblazer, being a rebel, being a revolutionary, being a dreamer. Um, that's really, that's how you change the world. So thank you so much for coming on and spending some time with us. All right. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. This is the Dare to Dream podcast. Go ahead and catch us next week.